Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can do image classification on the Fashion Image Dataset with Yolo V8. So we're going to use the Yolo V8 model for image classification. We can use it for pretty much everything, update detection, segmentation, post estimation, and also classification, which we're going to take a look at in this video, how you can run inference, train it, and also evaluate the model. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside the datasets tab up at the top, we can see we have this Fashion Image Dataset. That dataset, together with just the original MNIST dataset with image numbers between zero and nine. It is some of the most popular datasets out there when you're working with classification and getting started with machine learning, deep learning, and computer vision. So here we can see some key features about the MNIST dataset. Contains 60,000 training images, 10,000 testing images, and we basically just have a bunch of different clothed classes that we want to classify in between. So if you just go a bit further down, we can see the data structure, the labels. So we have all these 10 labels, t-shirt, top, trouser, pullover, dress, coat, sandals, shirt, sneaker, bag, and ankle boot. So we have these different 10 classes, which we're going to train and also run inference on. So we can classify these images with YOLO V8. Here you can read about the applications, but let's just scroll down and see some image examples and also annotations. So these are very low resolution images. It is 28 by 28 pixels. So it's not really high resolution images that we're working with, but we're still able with the classification models to go in and classify between all of these different classes here. We can see the sandal, even though we only have like a very few pixels to go in and use for classifying this as a sandal and the exact same th one with all the other ones. So we have shirt here and then we also have a coat where you can just see these are very similar. So let's now just jump straight into it. Let's jump into Google Colab notebook from scratch and see how we can set up the whole training pipeline and also run inference with the ULV8 classification model. So I've just created a brand new Google Colab notebook. First of all, make sure that we change the runtime. Again, you can use the free GPU resources on the Google Colab notebooks. So right now, let's take the T4 GPU. So our training will be significantly faster. It will take a very long time if you go in and train this on a CPU, but it is possible, especially when our images is only 28 by 28. So here, just press connect. It's going to just connect to the environment, and then we can start installing Autolytics and also just run the code with a few lines, either from the terminal or in the Python code, just a few lines, and we have the whole pipeline up and running, both for inference and also training. So first of all here, we need to pip install Autolytics. There we go. We have connected to our environment. Now we can pip install it. Make sure that you have this in front of it when we are calling commands in the terminal or in the command line. And that is how we do it in a Google Colab notebook. If you just use it raw here, it's going to run as Python code. So while it's installing Autolytics, let's go back into the documentation and see how we can use it. So right now, let's go in and use the example with the code. I'm copying it and then I paste it directly in here. So from Autolytics, we're going to import YOLO and then we have all the classification models. So if we go back again, we have all these different both tasks, but also modes, as you can see. So we can do detection, segmentation, classification, post estimation, and R in bounding boxes. All of this is supported directly with the whole Autolytics framework and for the YOLO V8 model. We have videos covering all of it, so definitely go in and check those out as well. The exact same way that you're calling it right now to pull this model. Let's just go with a nano model, but we just need to specify this CLS for classification. If you want to do segmentation, we just do SEG. Also have OBB and so on, so this is how easy it is to play around with the models. First time you're running this, it will automatically download it to your computer and we're good to go. So we can either use the pre-trained models or train a model from scratch. We can probably go in and try training a model from scratch, see how it performs. And then if it doesn't perform as good, we can go in and use a pre-trained one and try to just fine tune it on our specific data set. But we have a ton of data, 60,000 images in the Fashion MNIST data set. So let's just go in and try to see how we can do a model from scratch with Ultralytics. So if we go back into the documentation again, I'm just going to make zoom a bit out so you guys can see what's going on. But we basically have this classification. You can also go in and read about it. We have all the pre-trained models available. But right now, if you want to build a model from scratch, we just need to specify this YAML file instead of the PyTorch file. So right now, let's go back again. I'm just copied it. Let's go in and paste it in. And then we should actually just have everything trained from scratch. It's just going to initialize the weight parameters randomly. So here we go, we have that one and the data set, we can just specify that we want to use the Fashion MNIST. It's going to download it automatically from the Autolytics data set registry. 
and then it's good to go. You will have the data YAML file with the whole data structure. We have the epochs. So let's just try to go with 100 to start with. And the image size is 28. So we're good to go now. We have installed Autolytics. We're connected to a GPU. Let's run this block of code and see the training. After done training, let's see how we can run inference and also evaluate our model if it's good enough to use in our own custom systems. So it's pulling the model. It's unzipping all the data sets here. So we have the fashion MNIST. It is just exporting that. We have 70,000 images in total, but it's still only 28 by 28. If you're using your own data, like you only need a few hundred images, if you're using the pre-trained model and then fine tune it on your own data set, then we're only talking about a few hundred images, which is necessary to go in and classify between a number of different classes. So it's scanning the training set here. We have 60,000 images as we saw inside the documentation as well. We have our validation, 10,000 images for validation that we can run our evaluation on. And now we can see that it has started training for the first epoch. So here we can see the number of batches. We could probably train it for a bit less, probably like 30, 50 epochs. So this is probably just going to take ages. Let's just go up and just run it for 50 epochs instead. And then we can always take a look at the results or train for longer. But again, if you're using a pre-trained model, you might get better results. But again, I just thought that it would be pretty cool to see how we can train a model all the way from scratch because you will need to train it for significantly longer. You'll need more data because you basically just initialize the weights randomly. Scroll down, it should go a bit faster now. We only have 50 epochs. So let's just let it run here. Let's go in and take a look at the results. Once it's done training, we can do the evaluation and also run inference on a couple of image examples after to see if it's capable of classifying these 10 classes from the Fashion MNIST data set. So our model is now done training after 20 epochs. It took almost one and a half hour. If we just go up to the top, let's see if the losses was act like decreasing and also the top one and top five accuracies was basically just taking the classes in the top one and also top five to see if those are correctly predicted. So if we scroll all the way up, we can see that our loss starts at a pretty high value and basically just decreases over time. If I scroll a bit further over here to the right, we should be able to see the top one and also the top five percentages where within the top five, we pretty much just have 100% at the end where it starts out um, a bit lower at the top. So we can see that our model learns over time in the start, we only have like top five, but we only have 10 classes in the whole data set. But if you take a look at the top one, so here we have around 70% um, predictions, which are correct. And then we basically just keep increasing for the number of epochs and at the end we end up with around 90 percent in our top one accuracies so this is what now 20 epochs the model has pretty much converged if we scroll a bit further down we can then see our validation we are not running that but here we can see the top one accuracies and also the top five accuracies on our test set if we scroll a bit further down and also take a look over here to the left we then have our directory so we have our runs classify and then we have our train so if you go inside our weights folder you will get the best model and also the last model so that will be for the 20th epoch we can see the confusion matrix if we just take a look at that here we can see that this is all the classifications we have the true values down here so the ground truth and then we have our predicted values ideally all the values should be in the diagonal so this is actually like a pretty nice way to see how does my model perform in general and also is there any specific classes where it is failing so overall it does a pretty good job we can see we have a lot of values here so when it, what the true value is act like six it was predicting a lot of different stuff here to the left so we can see there's a bit of problems with this sixth class here but in general it looks pretty good if we take a look at the results we can also see all the training graphs so right now we can see the training loss and also the accuracies so they have pretty much converged after 20 epochs the losses are still going down a bit but it's kind of like converged here Validation train loss goes down and also the accuracies, they're going up and they're converged here at the top. So yeah, we have a fully trained model from scratch. We initialize the random weights. This is not a pre-trained model all the way from scratch. Could maybe get some higher values. If we were using the pre-trained ones, could go in and tune the high parameters and do a lot of stuff, do multiple iterations. If you just take a look at one of the batches, so here we can see an example of a batch where we're predicting it. So if I'm just zooming a bit in, again, we have very low resolution images. But here we can basically just see the different classes, which is color coded for which of the ones that are predicted. So if we scroll a bit further down, we can then see this is how we can do elevation. Right now, we don't really have any um, data inside of our validation set. So if we scroll into it, we only have test and train. But again, we can just specify that we want to run it on our validation set. But we did that up with our confusion matrix and also at the end. 
So right now, let's just go in and see how we can do inference with the model. We create an instance of it. So we can just take the top part. Let's create an instance of our model. We can either use an official model or specify the path to our new model. If we go over to the left, we have a runs directory, we have a train, and then we have a wait file again. You can download it so you can use it in your own local environment, or we can just copy the path. There we go. I've copied it. Now we're pasting it in. Let's create an instance of our model. Right now we're just creating two instances, but this one at the bottom will override it. So now we can just call the predict method directly. So we have our results, which is the variable where the results will be stored in. Then we can call model.predict. We specify the source and also if you want to show it, but right now let's just save it. We set save equal to true. And the source, let's go in and grab an image from our test set. So we have our test set. We have a bunch of images for the different classes. So this is the folder structure that you need for doing classification with Ultralytics. So we copy the path, there we go. Throw it inside here instead of the zero for a webcam. Should be able to run the blog code and do inference. We can see that the inference time was five milliseconds. We also have some pre-processing. Again, you can run this for multiple runs, but the inference speed is very fast. And this is around 200 frames per second that we can do classification on. So here we can see that we have 32 by 32, so the output, and here we have the class, which it has predicted, so this is the classification, and then we also have our accuracies here to the right. So this is basically just a class, and then we have our accuracy, or the probability of this class, and then again we have 6, and so on. So we're actually like 96% confident that this is a class 0, which is also correct, we took it from this folder. We can also see that the results are saved into our runs classify predict. Right now we can also just print. Our results and take a look at how it looks there we go and then we can go in and extract all the information we can just call results dot boxes if you're doing update detection but right now we are doing classification if you scroll a bit further down we can see the speed save directory path we even have the image in, in here as well and here we can see the names so if we go into our runs directory classify i'm just going to minimize all of this we have our classify and then we have our predict there we have our image where we should have our prediction on. So let me just make it a bit larger. Let's maybe just go in and download it so we can zoom in. There we go. So here you can basically see that this is act like some kind of t-shirt. Yeah, we can see it in the background. It basically just has this confidence score and also the class on top of it. So this is the top one and this is top two. So we pretty much have 0% confident that this is uh, a six, but here again, over 90% confident that this is a zero. So that is correct. Let's just try one more example. We go inside our data set, just take a random one test. Let's go down and take the seventh class. Let's grab this image, copy paste the path, throw it into the source. So this is how easy it is to run. Again, all the sources, you can pull images, from your webcam, video streams, and so on, directly throw it into the source, and you're basically running inference. So yeah, we should have the results now. Let's go down and take a look at it. So now we should have another folder with our predictions. And now we have predict here, classify, and this is the one, 1040. And right now we can see that it is pretty much 100% confident that this is a seven. So right now I'm just going to download again so you guys can see what's going on. Zooming in. There we go. 100% confident that this is class zero. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. This is how you can use the YOLO V8 models to do classification. Here showed you the whole pipeline, even with a model from scratch, how we can take a data set directly from the Autolytics registry, pull it automatically, set up a couple lines of code. We're then training a model from scratch, how we can run evaluation, look at the results, and also how to run inference. You can download the model file directly and use it in your own projects and applications. So thanks a lot for watching this video here. I hope you learned a ton. Definitely go in and check it out. It is really cool to play around with and you only need a few lines of code. Then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.